So hello and good evening. This is Ruth Pozuelo from Curva.com and it's time again for another DAX Fridays. How wonderful is that? And uh, today, DAX Fridays, we're going to go through two functions. We're going to go through the function row and uh, we're going to revisit union because we need union also for the formula that we're going to create. And uh, we will talk about some uh, useful tip tips and tricks about DAX. Uh, so this is actually a solution that was proposed by one of you, Fredrik. So we will go into that in more detail in a second. Uh, I just want to say, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, they are actually paving the road outside my window. Uh, it is like 10 o'clock at night and perhaps I shouldn't be doing this 10 o'clock at night, but I definitely shouldn't be doing that. If you can hear the noise, I will not know until I actually start editing the video. I apologize for that in advance, um, but there's nothing I can do about the noise and it's Thursday evening, so it has to be done now or never. So again, if you hear the noise, I apologize. I'll try to clean it up, but yeah, let's just start the video anyhow. So let's go ahead. So this was actually suggested by Frederick. Uh, he lives in London nowadays, but uh, he is Swede. And uh, he said, OK, Ruth, uh, I've actually watched your Dax Fridays 55. That is the video I published last week about how to create tables in Power Pivot. And he said, there is actually a way for you to actually give names to the uh, columns directly, so you don't have to do it afterwards. And that is very useful if you have a long table. So I am going to show you that. And uh, I will also take the opportunity to introduce the function row, and we will revisit the function uh, union. So it is a multi-pack Dax Fridays video, let's say. So uh, if you haven't seen Dax Fridays number 55, how to create tables, just do that. I will show you very briefly here, but perhaps if you know the details, you should check that out. So I will post a link as always in the description box. But uh, let's go to Power BI and start do some work. Okay, so as I show you on uh, Lax, last Dax Fridays video, the uh, number 55, you can actually now create um, tables in uh, here in the Power Pivot, or I don't know how to call it, Power BI thing, uh, using a simple structure. You can do it like this. So, and as you can see, it creates a row one, row two, so row one, row two, row three, and then this is a uh, column one, column two, column three. So between brackets is the actual uh, values of the rows, and each comma separated between brackets is the columns, right? And um, as you can see here, because you, we are not giving it a name, it actually gives a name by itself. So it starts with value, and as soon as you have more columns, you will say value one, value two, value three. Mm. And that's when Freddy comes in and says, okay, Ruth, you can actually give this a name from the beginning in case you're creating a more complicated table. And then you just share the DAX code with me, and I thought, oh, this is brilliant. Let's do a video about that. So how does that work? So to do that, we're actually going to, let's do a new table. We're going to use the function row. And let's go into the documentation to see what actually row does. And row, it says it returns a single row containing values that result, result from the expressions given to each column. So we have row name and expression. So let's say you have a row, a column name, and then the value, column name, value, column name, value. Okay, so let's go to Power BI and I'll show you. So row, let's say that we call the column name ID, and then value zero, and then 
column name god you have to hear that i'm so sorry column name name and then a value in this case text and we enter that so now suddenly we have a table that has two columns where we have the name of the column already from the beginning so this is really really nice so now we have a table without names on the columns and then we have a table with the column names so what do we do we put them together right okay so how does union work i have created a power bi glossary in case you didn't know and here i'm actually publishing all the functions that i am uh, going through as you can see i've done quite a few there are more than i mean we're on dax friday's 56 of course there are more in here because uh, in some videos i do like four or five years, sometimes even six. But anyhow, that's not what we're talking about. Um, I have already covered the function union. If you click here on you or you just write it here, you will get it. And if you click on it, you will actually see everything that I have covered regarding this function. So you will be able to go to the Microsoft documentation because the idea with this is not to replace what they already do at all. Uh, what I do here is uh, I have uh, the syntax uh, because that is useful and then the tutorial with the sample file and I have actually copied the remarks because I think they're very useful. I use um, this also as my own resource even if it sounds strange so um, you can actually come here and check out how union works but what it bakes basically does is it joins tables together so you have union and then you have table one and table two there are of course some remarks some things that you have to take care of or be conscious about at least when you do this so just check the video and you will understand that so we have union table one and table two. Let's do that union on our sample. Okay, so let's build this. We go to new table. We write union. And now table one and table two. And as you can see, this doesn't help. You have to again watch the union video to understand why, but basically what it does is it takes table one and then puts the other one, appends the other one. What we want is exactly the opposite to that. So if we just change the order here, we get exactly what we want. So we have table union one, union two, and then we get the table with the column names. And now you may ask, oh my God, are you serious? Do you really need to create two tables to create one? Of course not. So this doesn't need to be a already made table. You can make the table on the fly, if that makes sense. So let's do another try, okay? So let's do copy. So you don't have to watch me write, but we are going to do a new table, again a union, but this time we're actually going to copy the tables. It's going to say wrong, but don't worry. I just want to copy the other one too. Go in here. And now we paste the next table, we close it and you have everything on one form, which is on, on one row, which is uh, really, really good. So now you know how to create virtual tables or tables in uh, Power Pivot uh, using uh, this one line of code and having column names also. But this is not the end of the video. I have a special request for from Frederick and I said, Ruth, Please, could you actually show DAX formatter? And he said, well, you know, sometimes I just see 
other people's Power BI files. So somebody asked me help for a DAX measure, and he said, I hate to see, yes, you know, these one line of code is so difficult to read. And I, I, I'm going to show you how it's done, okay? So we're going to actually copy this, and we're going to go back to Google. We are going to Google DAX for Mutter. And this is actually a resource created by SQL BI. You know who those guys are, right? I mean, if you've been doing Power BI for more than two days, you know. But anyhow, um, you just write DAX for Mutter. And here you write equal your measure, click format, and voila. You get a beautiful code, and then you go to Power BI and you paste that instead. So here, this is what we paste. And this is so much easier to read. So I really agree with Frederick that we all should uh, try to write the DAX uh, language as us. How to say uh, as um, clean as possible so others can read it. Just a heads up on the DAX formatter. You have to write this equal. If you don't, it won't work. So if you just copy, oh, now I copied it. Let's see. So let's go back. Not that back. And if you paste it like that and click format, nothing will happen. You need to put equal, which is, I think is a little bit of a pity actually, because yeah, it's not that obvious that you have to do it. And um, perhaps you click on it like I did today a few times and they're like, what? <laughs> what is the problem? Hmm. You also, have to take into account if you are in the US, UK, or you know, like coma or semicolon. Sem is that Swedish? Anyhow, you know what I mean. Uh, so you have to check the formatting that you're actually using so DAX for Matter can do its job. Okay, but other than that, this is the way to do it. And as Frederick said, it's good. I mean, even if you don't need it, just put it in here format it, paste it back because somebody else eventually is going to read it and it just will help that person a lot. So this is all. Okay, so I hope you didn't hear the machines that much. I will only know now after I start editing the video. Uh, hopefully it was okay. If not, I apologize. If it is too bad, I will publish it anyway and perhaps do a clean copy later on. Um, nothing I could do about machines. But uh, anyhow, it, it is now the end of the video. So as usual, if you like the video, just let me know by liking it. It just really helps me understand what videos you like and what should I do more of. Um, know anybody that wants to know? Share it. And uh, subscribe, I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday is always dedicated to DAX. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you click the bell to receive notifications if you subscribe, uh, because YouTube stopped doing that for a while. Don't forget to fill in our DAX Friday survey. I always read it and uh, have a fantastic Friday. So I will see you again on Monday and I have a really cool, this is an old goodie from Chris Webb that I actually needed to do for a project. So I will show you, it's fantastic. But anyhow, that's on Monday. For now, focus on your weekend. Have a great evening, bye.